Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings from Jakarta, Indonesia, and welcome to the Sunan Kalijaga Islamic University Library Zoom meeting. I am Mustikawati, librarian of the Parliamentary Library of Indonesia, and it is a great honor for me to be the master of ceremony. Today, we proudly present the fourth International Talks Visiting International Librarians 2021, organized by UIN Sunan Kalijaga Library, SLA Asia, and Association of Islamic University Library. These international talks will provide a platform for exchange of knowledge and skill relevant to professional information in Asia and worldwide with a global perspective. This program will invite renowned librarians from all over the world to share about their experience and how they do their work so it will give inspiration to fellow librarians. Ladies and gentlemen, over the next few hours, this meeting will provide you to the opportunity to discuss, share knowledge, and insight about a review of competencies for library and information science or least professionals in the changing healthcare environment. Before we proceed this program today, we would like to express our gratitude to the Honorable Past Cabinet Chair of SLA, Mrs. Emma Davidson, the Honorable Vice Head of UIN, Sunan Kalijaga Library, Dr. Randa Khusnul Khotimah, SSMIP, the Honorable Speaker, Mrs. Professor Nalini Mahajan, Director of Marian Joy Medical Library, Wheaton, Illinois, USA. The Honorable Moderator, Mrs. Ulpah Andayani, SAG, SIP, MSI, Librarian of UIN Sharif Hidayatullah, Library, Jakarta. And thank you to our sponsors, EBSCO, iGroup, and Taylor and Francis, as well as distinguished participants. Before proceeding with the agenda today, please take a moment to listen to the National Anthem of Indonesia and UIN Sunan Kalijaga Haim. And ready and
It is with great pleasure that we invite the Vice Head of UIN Sunan Kalijaga Library, Dr. Randa Husnu Khatimah, SSMIP, to deliver the opening remarks. Thank you, Pak Mustikawati. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to all of you for being virtually here on this happy day. My name is Usul Khotima. It's an honor for me to speak on behalf of the Queen Sunan Kalijaga Yogyakarta Library. Let me start by welcoming you warmly to the international talks visiting librarians season four, recognized by Insulan Kalijaga Yogyakarta, SRE Asia, and APIS. Furthermore, I would like to say thank you to Professor Dr. al Rector of Insulan Kalijaga Yogyakarta, Ms. Labibah Emilayes, Head of Insulan Kalijaga Yogyakarta Library, and President of APIS. Ms. Emma Davidson, Vice Cabinet Chair, SLA. Dr. Nabi Hassan, Vice President of SLA Asia. I also express my gratitude to the speaker at this event, Professor Nalini Mahajan, Director of Marin J. Medical Library within Illinois, USA. Thanks to Master of Ceremony, Ms. Mustikawati, Chief Librarian of Lib Parliamentary of Indonesia, Ms. Ulpa Handayani, SAJ is IPMSE from Wayne Sarif Hidayatullah Library, Jakarta as moderator. I don't want forget to also thank you to our sponsors, I group. Exco, Taylor, and Francis for supporting us for international talks, visiting librarians session four. We couldn't do it without all of you. In this opportunity, Prof. Nalini Mahajan we will talk about competence for library information science professionals in the changing healthcare environment review. We will learn about the competences of librarians, especially librarians in the health sector. Librarian competence is the ability of librarian in carrying out their duties, including knowledge, attitudes, and skill. By having good competence, a librarian will be able to carry out this librarian duties. And this event, we hope to find out in more detail what librarian competencies are in the health sector. What are the innovation that librarians should develop in the health sector, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic? And then we can apply it to our respective duties. And so thank you so much for accepting in our invitation, Professor Nalini. For the participants from Indonesia, India, US, Korea, and other countries put on Zoom and YouTube channel. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining this program. Uh, My appreciation also goes to Winsunan Kalijaka Jogjakarta Library Team 
SLA Asia and Aptis Board for the solid teamwork. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. I would like to say once more on behalf of this visiting librarians organizer. Welcome, enjoy this session. Happy fasting, stay safe and stay healthy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mrs. Khosnul Khotima, for your speech. Right up next, we are pleased to invite the past cabinet chair of SLA, Mrs. Emma Davidson, to deliver the opening speech. Please, Mrs. Emma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Dika. And hello, everybody. Um, on behalf of the Special Libraries Association, it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome you all to this presentation today. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with SLA, um, a little bit about us. We are an international association of more than 3,000 information professionals around the world. We aspire to be the global organization for innovative information professionals and their strategic partners. And our members include librarians and information specialists working in universities, museums, hospitals, governments, banks, law firms, subscription management companies, and, and many other companies all around the world. SLA promotes and strengthens its members through learning, advocacy, and networking initiatives. Members join communities based on their geographical area, for example, our SLA Asian community, as well as communities for subject specialisms, including engineering, science and technology, business and finance, academic, and so on. Um, in addition to our flagship annual conference, which is being held online in August this year, SLA and its communities provide a constant stream of opportunities for learning, training, and connecting with other librarians. And we are also so proud and grateful to partner with, with other organizations like this amazing Visiting Librarian series, um, you and Sunan Kalyaga and the Asian members. Um, this is such a wonderful opportunity for people from so many countries to get together to learn from each other. And I'm really excited for Nalini's talk. Um, we're also extremely proud that our SLA Asian community has just been given an award for their excellent series of programs over the last year. So congratulations to everyone who was involved in that. Um, if anyone isn't a member, we would love for you cons to consider joining us. Um, you can find information online, sla.org, or, or one of our organizers today can help point you in the right direction. Um, and so without further ado, thank you so much again for being here today um, to UIN Sunan Kalijaga for hosting and organizing um, the ex excellent Laviva Zane for all her hard work as usual and, and everybody else who's helped. And um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Emma Davidson for your speech. All right. Now we shall move on to our main program with Mrs. Ulpah Andayani, SAG, SIPMSI, as the lead moderator. But before, I would like to remind all the participants that wish to receive an electronic certificate, please fill in the attendance form that you can see in the chat box and take note that the registration key is nine, four, four, two, three. I repeat once again, the registration key is nine, four, four, two, three. Okay. And now please allow me to introduce our moderator today, Mrs. Ulpah Andayani, SAG, SIP MSI. She is a librarian in Sharif Hidayatullah Islamic University, act as the head of technical serv 
services, and library cooperation. She is also a lecturer in Open University Indonesia. She received a master degree from University of Indonesia, majoring in library and information science. She's been active in doing research and making publications in several topics relate to the use of electronic resources, online catalog, subject indexing, scientific communication of lecturers, and record management. And her international engagement has developed from her experiences in library management internship program from Queensland University and teacher librarianship short course from McGill University. And now, without any further, I will hand it over to the moderator, Mrs. Ulpah Andayani. Please. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the time given, Master of Ceremony, Mbak Mustika. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Hopefully all of you are being uh, well now. Uh, thank you for attending this event. It is very great pleasure for me to welcome all of you, all the participants uh, in this prestigious webinar through Zoom or YouTube organized by the Association of Islamic University Libraries or Aptis in collaboration with the Library of Win Sunan Kalijaga, Yogyakarta. On this occasion, because this is the fasting month, I would also like to deliver my greetings and wishes to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Happy Ramadan, Ramadan Karim. May Allah bless you in all your endeavors and lead you to the path of the prosperity. Well, before starting the presentation, Allow me to deliver our special and high appreciation to Honorable the President of APTIS as well as the Director of Winsunan Kalijaga Library, Mrs. Ladi Bahzin. Hope you are always well, ma'am. And the Honorable the Putty Head of the Library, Mrs. Husnul Hatibah, who represented the opening of the seminar this morning. And the Honorable, our invited speaker, Professor Dalini Mahajan, the Director of Marian Joy Medical Library within Illinois, United States. Nice to meet you in, the, in this spiritual room, Madam. And the Honorable Emma Davidson, a very beautiful one, <laughs> as the past cabinet chair, and Dr. Nabi Hassan as the past president of SLA Asia. Nice to meet you too. And our beloved, the Jama'ah and the lovers of Aptis in around the world. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this for international talks, we'll discuss about medical librarians with the topic competencies for least professionals in the changing healthcare environment. Talking to this topic, we realized that due to the rapid development of technology, our working environment has also changed. This is certainly a challenge that demands our new role as librarians. Librarians must move quickly along with various innovation, and these, of course, must be supported by the readiness of competencies that will reinforce our professionalism, including in the medical library. Against this situation, then, what are the challenges and roles of medical and health librarians in responding to these challenges? And what specific competencies are actually needed in health environment that is currently experiencing changes? But don't worry, yeah, it will be answered because in front of us now, yeah, we have our outstanding speaker, Professor Nalini Mahajan, a person who expert this is no longer in depth in managing libraries and information in health and medical fields. But before delivering her presentation, I will introduce to all of you our speaker today. Yeah, 
Ibu Malini, Nalini Mahajan is an adjunct professor at College DuPage Library in Illinois and webmaster at Marian Joy Rehabilitation Hospital, where she manages the medical library for 32 years. Cukup lama ya. She develop and maintain several websites, including information connection and disability and rehabilitation. In addition, she also oh, awarded with various recognition in leadership, innovation, and use of advances technologies for dissemination information. Her achievement are recipient of the Winifred Civil Prize for Leadership 2017, a recipient of the Bio Distinguished Member Award in 2016, Librarian of the Year Award from Illinois Library System in 2010, and many other achievements. Some articles and papers have been published and presented in national and international meetings. Well, before Professor Nalini presents the paper, I would like to remind all the participants about the rules of this webinar conduct. The presentation will be delivered around 20 minutes, Professor. And after that, we have question and answer session for 15 minutes. All the participants can write down uh, the questions in the chat box, yeah, in the chat room, and I will deliver the question to Professor uh, Malini. During the presentation, all the participants must turn up or mute the speaker. Now, uh, we arrive uh, to the presentation. It is uh, the time to listen uh, to uh, Ibu Malini's presentation to Honorable Professor Nalini Mahajan. Time is yours. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Namaskar. Wa alaikum good morning and good evening to all of you, wherever you are. Um, thank you, Olpa, for the beautiful introduction. And what a wonderful opportunity to speak to such a diverse audience and share my experiences with the experts from around the world. I would like to thank Dr. Labiba for inviting me to this international series. I am truly humbled and honored. My special thanks again to Ms. Labiba and Ms. Mustika Wati. I hope I'm saying the names right. That's Ulpa Andiani yeah. and the entire library team. UIN Sunam Kalushaga Library, SLA Asia, and APPTIS. I would also like to thank Dr. Debalkar, Dr. Nabi Hassan, Dr. PK Jan, and um, all the organizers for their support. Last but not the least, the audience for their valuable time. Without them, we would not be here today. So thank you. Um, I'm going to start the, med, uh, the, the presentation with just a small, a short quote, which um, when we do the sharing of the screen, you will see, and that's, actually a tradition at Mary and Joy. We always start at Mary and Joy um, with, uh, it can be a prayer, it can be a quote um, from the spiritual department. So I decided to carry on with the same thing. Um, next slide, please. Um, Next slide. Next. I, I can't move the slides. Thank you. Um, so I don't see the text on the top, but actually that is knowledge is power. This was quoted by Francis Bacon in his book, Meditations, Sacre and Human Philosophy during 
1597, actually it's rooted from the proverb in Sanskrit and ancient Indian language. And accord, you know, the meaning of that ancient uh, proverb in Sanskrit is, there is no comparison between a king and a scholar. As the king is celebrated only in his country, whereas the scholar is celebrated everywhere. And I thought it was a nice way to start today's presentation. Um, okay, thank you. So I will let you, I will just say next and maybe then you can just um, go to the next slide. So on this slide, I have the College of DuPage Library. Um, the first um, picture that you see on the top is the entrance actually to the library, the main entrance. And then the second slide that you're seeing is basically stacks. And the library is 108,000 square feet on two levels with study seating for about uh, 500 students and plus. And the current enrollment is 25,000 students. It's one of the top community colleges in the nation and the top one in Illinois. The library is technologically very, very advanced. Um, I started there about 30, uh, 37 or maybe even 40 years ago. And we were actually in the barracks. And now we are in this beautiful building um, and it has all the latest technologies um, and as I mentioned, considered as one of the best libraries. During um, the COVID, we have not gone back to the library. There are very, very few um, staff members who are actually at the circulation desk. Nobody is allowed to go in and everything is done remotely. Uh, we do, do actually all the reference work uh, remotely from homes and I, don't think as yet we have any um, knowledge or any, um, we don't know when we are going to open. We are hoping that after the fall semester, we can go back, but it's something we really are not sure about. Uh, the next slide, please. So this is Mary and Joy Rehabilitation Hospital. I started here in 1986. It is located in Wheaton, Illinois, and it's a 120 bed freestanding facility. It's dedicated to physical medicine and rehabilitation. Uh, we have brain injury, spinal cord injury, stroke, neuromuscular, orthopedic musculoskeletal, pain management, and pediatric programs. It's one of the top hospitals in the nation when it comes to physical medicine and rehabilitation. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk later on a little bit more um, about the library. Uh, basically, my talk is going to be divided into three sections. So the first one is what is really a medical librarian or a health librarian? What are the competencies they need? And what is the main, uh, what are the main differences? And then I will talk about the competencies which have been um, done, uh, which have been written by SLA and MLA both. I'm not going to go into details one by one uh, with each competency because they are all listed on the websites for Medical Library Association as well as uh, Special Library Association. Uh, the third part, which is the most important to me, is the application of those competencies in, you know, in the real world. And that's where I am going to share with you my experiences 
um, using those competences, co competences in Mary and, at Mary and Joy Medical Library. So that would be the last part of my uh, presentation. Uh, according to the SLA president, Tom Brink, in 2016, there is virtually no area of work today that does not use information and data. And people who are skilled in finding, analyzing, managing, organizing, and sharing information and data can make the critical difference between organizational success and failure. So it just shows you how important the librarians are because basically everywhere in every single field, they are using the information and data. And um, we are the experts who make a big difference when it comes to organizing and making it accessible to everyone. Next slide, please. So what, what are special libraries and librarians? Emma kind of alluded to it. A special library provides specialized collection and information resources on a particular subject. It serves a specialized clientele and delivers specialized services to that clientele. So uh, the main purpose of a special library is basically catering towards its audience, its clients, its customers, its patrons. Um, and that's where it becomes a special library. Their collections are highly specialized in the area that they, they, um, uh, they represent. And it also delivers specialized services based on the needs of those clients. So the services, the resources, the products are all actually um, related to the clients. Special librarians provide the information edge for the knowledge-based organization by responding with a sense of urgency to critical information needs. And this is from sla.org. Um, so there is a little bit of, not a little bit, it's actually quite a bit of difference between an academic, a public and a special library. Even though all the libraries serve their special clientels, um, in some of the special libraries, there is a need of urgency. Um, the information has to be delivered very quickly and um, the information needs of um, say physicians or clinical um, staff, uh, it's, it's, it's really um, totally different from an academic library. And I will actually talk about it a little bit more. Next slide, please. The science librarianship stands apart in ensuring that knowledge about advances in the science and technology of healthcare research and practice is readily accessible to healthcare professionals, educators, students, researchers, and the public. Um, so the health science library actually, um, there are different types of libraries. Um, there are hospital libraries, there are medical clinic libraries, there are academic libraries where the medical libraries are part of those libraries. And they each serve the clients, the main clients actually, or the main customers or the patrons or users are from the healthcare field. So depending on the nature of that library, there might be emphasis on research and practice, but in a hospital setting, it is a totally different uh, way of dealing with information. Um, for example, a physician might call the librarian from um, his office where he's, an exa he's examining a patient, or 
they might approach librarians when they are actually doing a surgery and they need some information right away. So it's very critical to provide that information at the time they need it. So our main thing is to provide information when and where needed. That is, uh, that is what it is. Um, because that patient's life depends on that information that the physician is might be using uh, to save that patient. Um, the example of searches that we do in a medical setting would be what are, for example, if there are any new drugs for that particular disease, or if there are any side effects or any interactions between different drugs. And it's not just drugs, I just was giving you one example. It can be procedures, it can be modalities, anything. So when we receive these requests, we have to respond very quickly. And so that is one thing which is very, very important to us. Now, of course, if that library is part of an academic library, they are going to focus on um, research. And there, the information needs can be fulfilled maybe in a week, two days, one day, depending on what their policies are. Um, so I just want you to clarify that, that it is very, very different from an academic library or a public library. Um, we don't have the time to respond, to wait and then respond in three days or four days or five days. We have to respond um, to the physicians right away. Next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the trends. Um, recently, um, there has been a decrease in the number of medical libraries in the United States. As you can see, the Library and Book Trade Almanac um, shows that in 2007, there were 2,000 55 medical libraries. And in 2007, um, I think, uh, 17, I'm sorry, they were, they are only, they were only 1,387 libraries. Darkline is actually a system that is used for interlibrary loan in the United States for borrowing books, articles, et cetera. And they keep in their records, the addresses of all the libraries they, that, that are member. And Darkline Library also reported a similar decrease, which was about 30%. So they were 3,166 3, libraries were registered in 2007 and only 2,140 in 2017. And later on, when we talk about um, the medical libraries, I'm going to talk about joint commission. And that is also one of the reasons that there is a decrease in the libraries. In fact, maybe I will just talk about it a little bit right here. Um, so in United States, there is a, accreditation agency. It's called Joint Commission. It's also called JACO. So Joint Commission on the Accreditation of the Hospitals. It's one of the most important accreditation agencies for the hospitals. Um, the hospitals have to prepare for the accreditation depending on um, their visit. Sometimes they can stay for three to five days and they will cite the hospital for things that they don't think are up to the standard. Now, what happens is, what, uh, for the libraries, I was strictly talking about the libraries. So of course, first of all, all the hospitals would like to have that accreditation. 
It's a very, very long uh, process. Sometimes we spend close to three years preparing for their visit so that when they come, everything is in place. And each and every department participates in it and prepares for it. And when joint commission comes, they actually go to any department that they wish to. They also give um, um, an itinerary, but they, they can visit any department. They can ask questions. If I'm in the hallway, they can ask me questions. So it's a very, very big thing. Now, um, in 1986, when I joined Mary and Joy, um, actually they were um, just starting a residency program. And that was one of the criteria or one of the, um, uh, in the joint commission, uh, the library was a separate section. And in order to have a residency program, you needed a physical library and a professional librarian. That was required. Otherwise you could not have a residency program. Unfortunately, it has been now taken out. So now a library can be part of another hospital and still they can have, they, they might have access to resources. And as long as they have access to the resources, it's okay. Um, and that is that has been a big issue for us in the medical libraries. Um, that was one of the reasons that there was a cut in the libraries. But of course, there are other reasons, the budgets, um, the way that things are changing, and we will talk about the trends a little bit, um, but there has been a decline in medical libraries. Next slide, please. So these are the changes in the medical information and technology. Um, they have revolutionized the healthcare. M Health, which is the mobile health, mobile technology. And these things put the healthcare in the palm of your hand. Um, our um, patients actually can access their records. Uh, they can access all the medical um, data uh, by just you know, using their phones. Virtual care management. For example, I can actually, during the COVID, I had several visits, but they were all done over the phone, over the video, and I didn't have to go to the hospital or the clinic. Telemedicine is another area where someone remotely actually can show a surgeon how to perform the surgery or help them. Patient-centered care is actually a very, very big thing. Um, big data, electronic health records. Uh, most of the hospitals now have um, a particular system that they use for the electronic health records. I, I am, um, uh, my doctors belong to a particular um, system. It's called DuPage um, Medical, uh, medical um, Group. And it doesn't matter where I am, which doctor I go to, if that doctor belongs to that system, all my data can be accessed by another doctor. So I don't have to carry my medical records, but it's within that system because another system might be using another data. And then of course, we talk about artificial intelligence, augmented reality, internet and social media, as you know, it's playing a big, big part um, in, in the healthcare field. And of course, consume, consumerism is one of the hottest topics right now. So next slide, please. So to deal with these challenges and um, just to be um, up to date, there are professional competencies and they relate to special librarians knowledge in the areas of information resources, information access, technology, 
management and research and the ability to use these areas of knowledge as a basis for providing library and information services. Uh, next slide, please. So according to SLA special libraries, uh, special librarians require two main types of competencies. Uh, the first one, um, uh, there are six competencies. They are called core competencies and they are intrinsic to the information profession. And they basically define what information professional do and how they work. This is from SLA org their website. And then they are enabling competencies, which are used by special libraries at librarians, as well as other professional in other fields. These include effective communication, project management, and innovation. I'm sorry. Is somebody talking to me? Yes. Um, so these include effective communication, project management, and innovation, support well uh, overall professional success and development. Next slide, please. Um, these are, or the following are the six competencies. Information services, second, information and knowledge system and technology, information and knowledge resources, information and data retrieval and analysis, organization of data, information and knowledge assets, and information ethics. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'm not going to go into the details of all these competencies because they are explained beautifully uh, in the document. Services. That Second, information and knowledge system and technology, information and knowledge resources. Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Um, so next slide, please. So now I'm going to talk about the competences which have been defined um, by MLA, Medical Library Association. Um, they, a Medical Library Association defines professional competencies as essential professional skills and abilities that can be observed, measured, and taught. Next slide, please. And these were revised in 2017. So competency one, information services. And um, that actually talks about the health information professional locates, evaluates, synthesizes, and delivers authoritative information in response to biomedical and health inquiries. And what I'm going to do is out of these, I will just give you a few, um, um, I would say, take a few of them and give you the examples of what I did at Mary and Joy. So the second competency is information management. The third instruction and instructional design and then, of course, the leadership and management. And there, there, are, there is a document which is available on MLA, which actually not only gives you details, but it also gives you performance indicators. I wish I had the time to go into all these. I thought it would be best to share with you how I use them in the, in the library. Evidence-based practice and research and health information professionalism. So now we are going to go to the next slide and I am actually going to talk about um, what we did. 
So I think, uh, so um, I'm going to first talk about the information services, competency one, which I read to you. Um, and I just want to give you, uh, can you tell me how much time is left, please? Uh, your presentation is until 9.50, Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. Okay, so I have 15 more minutes? Yeah, oh. five more minutes. I'm sorry? Five more minutes. Oh, five more minutes, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, yeah, what I'm going to talk about is quickly, what we did at Mary and Joy. So when I joined Mary and Joy in 1986, there was a library and the, re the reason I was hired was the uh, residency program. Um, and as I mentioned to you, because of the joint commission, we did not have any books in the library. Um, there was a card catalog and the previous person, because they were all nuns, uh, they had just uh, cataloged some of the articles. Um, in 1986, the total um, budget was $5,000. And within 10 years, we were able to triple the budget. Uh, within two years, I'm sorry, we were able to double the budget. And by the time, um, uh, three years ago, the, the budget was amazing. We had access to all uh, different databases. Um, it was not easy, but what I did was to make sure that people understood the value of the library. The first five years, continuously, I presented at um, the Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Uh, instead of just presenting at um, the Medical Library Association or SLA, I was interested in letting the physicians um, recognize the library and um, the skills we had. We also, um, and I was actually alone, I was a solo librarian at the time, and I had only 16 hours to work. We were the first library in our consortium to get um, an online catalog. And I can answer some of the questions when, you know, later on, but we were the first one to get a catalog. And even now within our consortium, there are only two libraries which have the online catalog. Um, we also did, I also, um, um, kind of, um, you know, um, established a very good relationship with the doctors because the doctors are the backbones. And we did what is called a clinical librarianship. We actually, I went on rounds every single day in the morning for six months. And I would write down the questions they had, come back and within two hours, we would actually, um, I would actually send the um, answers. So we had a threshold. It was a very scientifically done study. The paper was published later on and we actually dealt with seven cases where there was the outcomes improved and we were able to bring um, the cost down. And the doctors considered the library as never, number one strength of the hospital. I started with 16 hours and after five years, we had three staff members in the library. Um, the main thing that most of the medical libraries do not do is the competitive intelligence because I had the background in academic libraries and I used to use dialogue at the time. Um, the first search that was done uh, asked uh, by, um, by my boss and the executive uh, vice president was actually the trends on rehabilitation. We did not have any computers. We did not have any, um, any journals and he needed the information by evening. 
So I actually collaborated and asked a friend of mine who was at a bigger library, went over there, and we did a search on Medline. And you wouldn't believe that you could not see, it was dumb terminal, you could not see anything. But you were printing, and by evening I had 11 articles for him. Uh, which were actually physically, I had to go to the different libraries to pick them up. Now he was the executive vice president. And even though he did not say anything to me, he knew the value of information and how important it was. So within a week, I was given a computer. And then after that, we were the first ones to get the fax machine. Um, not only that, of course, the budget was increased and I got the staff. And then we also, uh, they gave me money every year to go to two conferences. And if I was presenting a paper, they would also allow me to go to another conference. So they were actually very generous with, with me. Um, as far as the community is concerned, because one of the competencies actually talk about uh, making information accessible um, to the community. And what we did was I wrote a proposal um, and it was um, actually four proposals and we got four contracts from the National Library of Medicine. And I developed two websites one was information connections. The other was um, disability and rehabilitation. And we actually got awards for both of them. Um, and that was giving to the community because these uh, websites could be accessed uh, from anywhere. There was no password login and the information was free to everyone who wanted to access it. Um, so since there is not enough time, I just want to say a few things what I feel that if you look at the document, if you look at the competencies, this is one of the websites. If you go to the next one, this is disability and rehabilitation. So these are the two websites. And, um, my thing, uh, I strongly believe that having timely access to high quality and reliable information at the point of care and at the point of need helps clinicians and consumers make informed healthcare decisions. It can reduce hospital costs and improve patient outcomes. Our mission is to provide knowledge based information resources and specialized services to all Mary and Joy associates, including physicians and health users obtain reliable and up-to-date information. But the key is when and where it's needed. If they want it in print format, we provided that in print format. If they want it in electronic format, we provided that in electronic format. Delivering information when and where needed has become my mantra. And also from my experience at Mary and Joy, I have learned that performance and ingenuity of a librarian are more important than the physical size or a location of a library. It's what you do, how you deliver. And if you have promised something to someone, make sure you do that. Marketing is very important because everybody needs to understand the value of library. Whether you do it by presentations, whether you um, go and meet uh, the management, the administrators, start um, what we call alert uh, for them in the topic areas that they are interested and that's how our executive vice president realized the value because I was giving him ex, um, every single day um, this alert service, which provided him with the competitive intelligence information about the competitors that we had.
So they would get the information and they could use it, but I had to actually evaluate and synthesize it. And that's very, very time consuming. But I got to know my clients very well. I got to know the physicians and I got to know how each one um, wants the information in a different way. We package it. We package the information, deliver it to them. In, a, in an academic setting, like at College of DuPage, I teach them how to do searches. We teach them how to use resources. That's a big difference. In some special libraries, um, the, the, your customers do not want to do the searches. Not that they can't, it's just they don't have the time. The physicians do not have the time and they prefer to have um, information delivered to them when they need it. Now, the younger generation is a little bit different. They are doing their searches. They know how to use computers and it's changing, but they are also spending too much time on the internet. And that's where your skills, your uh, expertise comes in. Train them, show them how to do it and not to waste time on the internet. And unless you do all these things, it's, it, it's challenging. It's very, very challenging, but they would not really know the value of your library. So thank you so much. Um, there are lots of things I can share with you. So maybe another time, but thank you again. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Nalini. It is a very inspiring and interesting presentation. We learned so many things, how to manage uh, special libraries. And from your presentation, we understand that having competencies uh, that re relevant in our working environment is very compulsory, even though, of course, it, they, were, they are different uh, according to the types of the libraries. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, you said just now that uh, working in medical, library, in medical library or working as a special libraries, librarian, yeah, um, we have to be able to answer the questions very quickly yes. in, emer in emergency time. Yeah? Yes. Uh, for example, like you said that if, uh, for the surgery situation, we have to, able, we have to be able to give uh, the information quickly yeah, according to the situation. And um, Three things that I also highlight with your presentation is uh, who is, whatever, wherever we work, yeah, uh, what types of uh, library we manage, we have to uh, pay attention to the information we deliver. Marketing information is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it can. Uh, we have to show the value, the value of our library. Yeah, giving uh, alerts, uh, alert services yeah, and do competitive services and give package of in the information to our client or our users. Yeah, yeah I think uh, the participants will not be patient to us. Yeah, it is a very great chance for everybody to ask a question to our speaker in the in this chat room, I see three questions from Dr. Santanu. Dr. Santanu, first question: How do you differentiate between hospital service and healthcare? And health, yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Make it clear. Okay. Yep. How do you differentiate between hospital services and health case academic services? Health, I'm how, sorry. How Hosp do you differentiate? How do you differentiate between hospital services and health case academic services? Okay. Um, in, a, in an ad academic environment, um, it's going to, the main, I think, uh, focus is going to be the students, the faculty, and uh, the other staff. And they are 
students studying. Uh, then the faculty is doing research and the students too, the doctors, physicians, everyone. So the difference in a hospital setting and in hospitals also we do research. It's not that we don't, but in a hospital setting, we are more concerned with delivering the information when it's needed. So if, um, as I mentioned to you, if a doctor, for example, I used to get calls from um, our physicians when they were in the evaluation clinic. So they are seeing a patient and they will send me electronically that I need this information. Uh, before I started there, of course, we didn't have any services uh, when it came to computer searches and all that. So what I did was we actually increase the threshold. So our threshold, if it was patient related search, it had to be answered within two hours. If it was not patient, then we could actually do it first come first serve. But in, in a uh, academic setting, you don't have really um, if there is a library in an academic setting for the hospital usage, it would be probably uh, a different section of that. We do have, for example, we are part of Northwestern. So that's an academic institution, but there is a separate library which deals with the hospital. I don't know if I, you know, if that was what you were asking, Shantanu. Yeah, but I think uh, you are partially, uh, yeah, we have, uh, hi, can you hear me, Nalini? Yes, I can, yes. Okay, so thank you, Nalini. As usual, you are very beautiful and, uh, you know, giving your presentation on this. Uh, I, I'm sure you know that I currently work with the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Yes. Now, we have both, you know, academics, you know, services and the healthcare sectors is there. On the other yes. hand, the hospital services. So we have to bring in a synergy. So I think, yes, the kind of things you were saying. My next question is how you are coping up with the current uh, pandemic situations and what are the measures and controls you have taken for this? So nobody is in the hospital. The library is, um, I just wanted to actually correct everyone that I, I am still with Mary and Joy, but I retired from my directorship. I am okay. now the webmaster. And it's very sad to report that right after I retired, they actually not closed the library, but they got rid of all the books. Uh, it's a one room library now with one shelf of books, but the electronic sources are there. And the person who um, is there uh, now She's not a professional librarian, but she worked with me, so she knows most of the things. So things are changing very, very rapidly, but she is working from home and um, she's doing the searches from home. So whenever the searches come, she does the searches like anybody else would, like I am doing uh, for you know College of DuPage, um, but nobody really um, except the clinical side of the hospital or the clinic clinicians um, nobody else is there everyone oh. else is working remotely but providing the same level of service i don't know to be very honest what they are providing uh, but at college of dupage we provide exactly the same level of service yep They're and the last question is nalini that um... Do you have anything related to, you know, research information management? Like, for example, you identify, we, because you mentioned that you used to visit 16 hours a day, used to visit all the people. So basically, in the, uh, the challenges, which I find that I have to find out the different types of research gaps, because a large number of research is taking place, but where exactly the research should be done for future? How do you have any, uh, I mean, have you come across in the U.S. or anywhere else where the research information management system is in place? Well, when you talk about the research gaps, um, I would think, I, I, I don't know, I don't have an answer for you, to be very honest. 
But I would think that the research gaps would come when your physicians or clinicians ask for uh, a particular topic, because I'm sure the way we used to do it, if they had to start a research, they had to come to the library and we had to actually research, you know, and it would be a very comprehensive, comprehensive research on that topic before they would give a permission to start a research paper, because a lot of time goes into it. And if there are already papers published on it, then right away they were told that they could not pursue that research. And through that, we could find that there were areas where no research was done and they needed to do that research. So that actually helped us identify many, many gaps where they needed to do research. Does it help? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Santanu, for the questions. Uh, Prof. Um, Nalini, we still have another question from Hasana. Mm -hmm. From Ibu Hasana, you explain the health technology trends. Which technology that now use in your library and whose person that manage it, that manage it is the librarian or any other team? Say it again. Yeah, you explain the health te the health technology trends. Which yes. technology that now use in your library? And who is in charge, yeah, to manage uh, the the technology? So who library. is in charge? Is it, uh, is it a librarian or any other team? No, uh, right now, currently, um, at the hospital, it's not. She's not a professional librarian. Is is that the question? Maybe I'm not understanding the connection. Yeah, uh, he asked I actually about uh, the application. Yeah, the the technology implemented in her library. What application uh, you have there, and how do you manage? Uh, can I speak the, to the, the technology? I really don't know what he means. Is it possible to speak to her? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is via, via YouTube, via YouTube. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so we can't uh, speak. To yeah, Hasana actually uh, is going to ask about uh, the technology, okay. yeah, uh, trend uh, implemented in hell, in in hell. Uh, in I library. think Nalini, what uh, she, uh, what yeah. the what he, what the participant wants to find out, what are the current technologies which are used yeah, in well, the yeah, yeah, health yeah, information yeah. service oh. sectors? Because oh, okay, okay. So in the libraries or the ones that I talked about, I mentioned I, the different technology trends. Yeah. And uh, remember, I mentioned those um, seven or eight, and then. It was like using your, for example, mobile to, you know, the cell phone. Or are you talking about what we are using in the libraries? Yeah, maybe in the this is the other thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. So the technology is exactly the same that you have in an academic setting, which would be, um, you know, the databases to retrieve uh, information. And um, then, of course, um, you know, what we were doing is like right now, what we are doing is using screen sharing to teach them how to do research because it's remote right now. Otherwise, you would really in person show them how to do it. And then um, when it comes to technology, um, basically exactly, the same technology that you would use in an academic setting to answer the questions. You know, COVID has changed everything. Otherwise, there is chat that you can use. There is telephone that you can use. There is, of course, you know, with the doctors, we always use, they like to use, there are three 
different types of customers we have. One is who wants to use uh, electronic. Um, so it, it would be email. It would be another person likes to use only telephone when they call us. And then the third person wants everything in actually printed format still. And the reason for that is some of the physicians are um, older generation and they still are not very comfortable with, um, with, with the um, electronic delivery of information. Now, the other technology I talked about is, which is the biggest technology, is actually uh, the health records. So the health records, I mentioned that if I belong to the same system, all my health records are there, which reduces the time for the physician, because when I go there, he can recently, I had to be admitted twice to the emergency room. I didn't have to take my um, papers with me. There was nothing I took. They could retrieve everything on the computer from the day that I had joined that group. And um, so th that is a very, very big thing. And then of course the documentation, the documentation is all done electronically. So you don't have to type anything and then the transcripts are done also electronically. You can just dictate them. Um, so these are some of the things is, I don't know if this is what the person wanted to know. Yeah. You know? With your permission, Nalini, can I add a few things? Sure. Okay. So uh, for answering to the question, since I also work in the same area, so that let me and, uh, you know, add a couple of things here. See, one of the current trend which is coming up in a very big way and where I think the in the as Nalini mentioned that in the, the there is a change in the library information science professional in the health sector is taking place and the new core competency is coming up. So one of the important area which is coming up is health informatics, where you yeah. do yeah. Uh, extensive work yeah. with the help of the data which is get generated even you when you wear your, you know, the digital watch, there is an yeah. entire amount of you know, data which is get generated and you have to use a certain programming languages for that. So that is one area. Second is that, as Larry mentioned, one of the important component which is playing a very, very important role is your virtual learning environment, yes. where, which is a very important part of the telemedicine and where you are getting the people, you know, acquainted with the new things which are coming up. Virtual learning environment is playing a very big role. The third is on, research analytics, where I am uh, experimenting on that, which is on research analytics to find out using the artificial intelligence and deep learning methods to find out what are the research gaps left out in different research areas. That is the third part. Fourth is on hyper-reality. Hyper-reality is using the uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, mm -hmm. and uh, the multimedia reality together to uh, you know teach the different students in a hyper learning environment, in a hybrid learning environment. Like for example, there are certain databases, I'm sure Nalini would uh, you know, um, add to that, like Eklund's Anatomy, if I talk about, or uh, which use a platform called Visual DX. It's a very strong platform where these kind of technologies are used for clinical decision systems. And the last but not the least, your the EHR records, the electronic health record, which she's talking about, that has that is giving birth to the patient care system and expert system, where automatically, when you write down a disease of in detail, it picks up the information and provide and suggest you the clinical decisions. Then you, uh, as well as the different kinds of drugs and all which are there part of it. Sorry, the, Nalini, I had to add this. No, 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 that's okay, because those are the ones that I talked about. One was the mHealth, mobile technology that puts healthcare in palm of your hand. Virtual care management, telemedicine, patient-centered care, big data and electronic health records, which is EHR, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, internet and social media, consumerism, and then the list goes on and on. But these are the ones that I mentioned. 
And actually he would have that slide. And if he has more questions, uh, please tell him that, you know, he can email me and I will be glad to answer those questions. But these are the ones which are already listed on one of the slides that you have. Okay, so thank, I you, Ibu and thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I hope that uh, Ibu Hasana, is it clear enough? Jadi banyak sekali ya pemanfaatan teknologi yang bisa digunakan di bidang kesehatan ini. Jadi tren perkembangan teknologi di bidang kesehatan ini banyak. Tadi diantaranya ada pemanfaatan uh, database tertentu bidang kesehatan ya, certain uh, databases itu ada platform dan ada website, ada 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 database yang bisa digunakan. Kemudian ada health informatik, ada virtual learning di bidang medicine, ya ada apa namanya uh, riset analytics tadi dan pemanfaatan uh, apa mobile uh, handphone tadi dan seterusnya itu banyak sekali sekarang tren-tren perkembangan teknologi di bidang kesehatan mudah-mudahan ini sedikit menjawab ya nanti kalau kurang jelas bisa di apa apa namanya di email tadi ya yeah, uh, we still have another question I'm ibu nalini I'm sorry. I just yeah. wanted to thank Shantini for um... yeah. Pak San tadi terima kasih juga sudah diperjelas sama Dr. San Santanu ya. The other questions how to improve from Japarispi. Japarispi ini ras Japarispi tapi kok dari Mumbai ya. From YouTube how to improve and provide better services in pandemic situation to the clients. How to improve and... how to improve and provide better mm -hmm. services in pandemic to, situation to the clients um as i mentioned to to uh, you know earlier when you asked that question um there should be a way to provide the same level of service from home if they are home i don't know uh, where, where is this person and do they go to the library or they are doing remotely what are they doing? Remotely, I think. Remotely. Okay. Yeah. So if they are doing it remotely, then you need to provide the same level of service. And it can be done very easily because say there is a true, you know, in our case, it would be a face, not face to face, but on the, in, um, on the we, we call it uh, chat. And I'm sure everyone else calls it chat too. But what we are doing is we have actually chat plus screen sharing. Plus, if they want to call, I will be able to talk to them, walk them through the entire search and how the search process. Uh, the books, of course, are you know, available electronically, but I don't know what the budget is. It all depends on the person's budget. Um, if you have the budget and you can actually maybe co collaborate with another library and uh, by collaborating, you may be able to share the cost of different databases and also uh, the books. Many times a particular library may not be in a position to come up with the, the budget required for all these, but at a reduced cost, maybe the other library allows them to access it. Um, also, uh, there are national library databases. Uh, Medline, for example, there is no cost to it. And National Library of Medicine provides not one database, but several databases, mm -hmm. which they can actually use to get the searches done without any cost. That is one database that is available free to everyone. There is actually another database which is called Embase, Exota Medica. It is uh, for, um, you know, very much, they, they kind of overlap, but that is one of the most expensive databases. So you can see by using the National Library of Medicine, which is our library here in the United States, anyone, anyone from anywhere can use that. 
they can also actually ask for research help. And there are lots of eBooks available. The other thing I would suggest is look into the databases which offer free books. There are lots of databases. There is open access. So the journals can be, you know, they can make a list of those journals. They can make a list of those databases. And the reason I'm talking about it, because I don't know what the budget of, of that library is. Uh, the databases can be very expensive, very expensive. And depending on your user, um, number of users, it, it can run into, you know, several thousand dollars. So for them, it would be nice to start at least with all this free information, open access journals. Um, uh, we actually, even at Mary and Joy, we had a list and we kept updating it so that we would have a list of all the open access journals and also the databases and the books, which are free. Uh, but this would allow their users to go and access these. If they have the money, then buy the eBooks instead of the print books, but provide the same level of service. If the search comes, look at the search, do the search, send the information right away. If you are teaching someone to do the search, ask that person to be with you. I do it many times myself where I give them my phone number and say, would you rather talk to me? I can walk you through this whole search process. If you prefer that, it's up to you. You don't have to just uh, limit yourself to the chat. You do the screen sharing and you can show them everything. Uh, does, does it help? Ya, yeah, we think so. <laughs> Ibu Nalini, uh, we still have uh, one other question. It, it will be the last questions for you. Uh, we are very sorry. We understand that you still, uh, all participants, of course, will have so many questions because of the limited, a uh, very limited time. And Dr. Nabi Hasan has to go back to the office soon. Yeah, so this is, this, it will be the last questions. From yeah. Aziz Alfarisi from Library of Karya di Hospital Semarang. How do you distinguish between library collections and medical records, such as um, patients? Okay, yeah, that, that you know that causes a lot of actually uh, confusion because many people um, think that as librarians we are keeping actually medical records. Medical records is a totally different uh, department. Uh, a medical librarian specializes in doing research on a particular topic. So if a physician comes and wants information about a drug, wants information about a disease, wants information about a disorder, wants information about uh, treating a particular drug. I mean, these are just the uh, you know, samples, examples of searches then a librarian actually uses the resources available in the library to answer those questions. Whereas um, electronic records or other medical records, it's a totally different uh, department. What they do is they are actually responsible for organizing, keeping, having access to the medical records of a patient. So when the patient is admitted to the hospital, it starts with a medical record. It may start with the history and then what was the medication given to? What were the tests that were done? What were the results of those tests? So those are the medical records and they are totally separate from what we do in a library. That doesn't mean that a librarian cannot do that work. Um, and actually our consortium, there are two librarians who, um, were medic who were asked to do medical records as well. But these are two different professions or two different departments in a hospital. That is the medical records 
are the ones for the house, uh, the patient. And usually, unless you're working with them, you do not have access to those records because the HIPAA, and I, I really don't know, I sh should have checked what is equivalent to that in India or in Asia, other countries, but we call it HIPAA. HIPAA is an agency which tells you what is the con uh, what uh, you know the confidentiality between a doctor and a patient, the records which cannot be touched by anyone. Even if I'm working in the hospital, um, we have strict guidelines. You cannot um, leave your computer um, turned on. It should be turned off automatically so that nobody else can see those medical records. You cannot discuss a patient in front of another patient or a staff or anyone. Those are very, very confidential records because that is basically everything related to that patient. Okay, thank you, Professor Nalini Aziz. I think it is clear enough for further explanation. If you still need the, the further explanation, you can send Ibu Nalini email. Yes. Yes, well, uh, uh, because of the a very limited time, once again, we are very sorry. Uh, we cannot continue our discussion for this session. Uh, thank you very much, Ibu Professor Nalini. It is a very, very useful and uh, beneficial yeah uh, thank you for your knowledge for your learning experiences uh, hopefully we can uh, still discuss to the uh, to another session and uh, thank you also for all the participants for the committee we give applause to our outstanding speaker and I want to remind all of you, don't forget to the next uh, session, international talk uh, session, 27 May about government librarian. And I return this time to uh, Master of Ceremony, Mbak Mustika. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to participate in the series. Um, namaskar and thank you again. Thank you, Mrs. Nalini. Well, uh, it's such a great and interesting discussion, uh, but uh, the time is not... Uh, <laughs> we, we, we already we already have uh, the time uh, limited time mm -hmm. and last but not least we invite the past president of SLA Asia Dr. Nabi Hasan to deliver vote of thanks for Dr. Nabi Hasan please the time is yours thank you very much uh, Mustaki. Uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum everyone. We are also fasting in India. So uh, thank you very much uh, webinar team for this wonderful, really wonderful and useful program and uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, for proposing the vote of thanks. Uh, on behalf of the organizers, I feel privileged to propose vote of thanks for this visiting librarian number four April edition program organized by UIN Sunan Kalijaga Library, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, in collaboration with SLA Asia and APTIS. We are thankful to Ms. Emma Davidson, past cabinet chair of the SLA, who is a great supporter of the library movement, especially in this part of the world. She is always with us whenever there is some program, although she has to adjust many of his, uh, many of her uh, like meetings or schedules. Thank you so very much, Emma, for your motivating inaugural remarks. We are grateful to uh, Professor Nalini Mahajan, uh, ex-director of Marinjoy Medical Library, Wheaton, Illinois, USA, 
for her wonderful talk on the topic uh, competencies for LIS professionals in the changing healthcare environment, a review. She delivered wonderful content as for her experience covering the role of the special libraries and the different professional competencies the librarian should have as per different standards like SLA and especially MLA. Uh, she specially touched six competencies as per the MLA, connecting it with her experience. And uh, she wonderfully uh, answered almost all the question. Uh, we are really sorry we were having limited time because uh, I think it was scheduled until uh, 9 a.m. Indian Standard Time. So we are uh, still going to offices physically. Uh, our office has already started. So, uh, I mean, the time of the program is also like was limited. So we could not answer all the question. Uh, we are grateful to all the participants who raised the question, who joined us. Let me share with you that uh, there is a one great connection between me and Nalini that we had our some education from the same university that is Aligarh Muslim University in India. Yes. We would like to thank uh, Kosnul Khotima, Vice Head of UN Sunan Kalijaga Library for the opening remarks. Uh, Ulfa Andiani, Librarian of the UN Sharif Hidayatullah Library, Jakarta for wonderfully moderating this session. And uh, Mustika Wati, Librarian of Parliamentary of Indonesia and Master translating the sign language. I don't know the name, but uh, the lady was beautifully translating uh, uh, our uh, voice into the sign language. And uh, last but not the least, Labiva Zen for this overall great show, although she could not join because of, of sub health issue, but uh, I think she would be able to uh, see the uh, recording on YouTube. And uh, actually, she planned these things all the way. The, this vote of thanks will be incomplete without thanking the devil, the current president of SLA Asia, and also the PK Jain, or popularly known as PK, for motivating for such collaborations. Thank you all the participants who joined uh, from different parts of the world. Please keep following visiting librarian program events in future as well as uh, the uh, master of ceremony Mustika already announced our next event will be in the May and uh, please join that event as well. Thank you again. Have a nice day and happy Ramadan. Over to you, Mustika. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nabi Hassan. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end of our meeting. Uh, thank you to all of the participants and then, of course, for the moderator, Mrs. Ulpa Andayani, and the speaker, Mrs. Professor Nalini Mahajan. And then, uh, hopefully, this meeting will be beneficial for everyone. Before we end this program, uh, we need to take some picture. So, uh, please, for all the participants to turn on your camera in a minute. We will take some picture. Okay, let me check first. The slide one already. Uh, and slide two, and slide three, and slide four. Many participants not. Uh, turn on the camera if you want to join the session for taking picture please turn on your camera <laughs> Okay, now let me count. Slide one. One. Two, three, give a big smile. 
Okay. Slide two. Now slide two. One, two, three. Okay. Now slide three. Slide three. Slide three. One, two, three. Now the last slide. Slide four. One, two, three. Okay. I think. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, here I will read um, the information that the international talks visiting international librarians, uh, the fifth or the next session, will be with Shirley English, Shirley English Cruz. It, uh, the topic is about government librarian. It will be held on 27 of May uh, in the same time. So thank you very much for joining us today. Have a nice day and see you in the next session. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hasan, how are you? Nalini, we will catch up. Yes, we will. Doctor yes, Santano, we'll send me. Uh, Doctor Santano, yeah, I'll send you. Thank you yeah, very much. Pak Nurdi, Mister Deba, Pak Husnul. Yeah, thank you, Husnul. Doctor Deba, thank you. Thank you, Ibu Adriati. Oh, ada Mbak Adria. Mbak Adriati, terima kasih. Some of. Uh, Librarian for from, from the Central all. Library. Dr. Debal, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mbak Anissa, terima kasih. Teman-teman semuanya, Bapak-Ibu, terima kasih. Thank you, Prof. Nalini. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih, Bu Husnul. Terima kasih, Mbak Dian. Aika, sukses ya. Terima kasih, Mbak Dian. Aika, makin cantik. Siapa ya? Oh, Mbak ini ya.